And, and when you were running, you had to do some Uber work, right? You worked as an Uber driver. Uh, yeah. Because you, <laughs> you needed to live while you were also running for, yep. for, for Congress. What's it going to be like up here? I mean, this is not cheap. Do you have to... Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's not cheap. I'm dealing with it with it right now, getting denied from apartments, trying to figure out where to live because I have bad credit. I'm probably just going to have to, like, couch surf for a little bit. You just listened to 25-year-old Congressman-elect Maxwell Frost explain the volatile housing situation members of Congress find themselves in if they're elected from the working class and they don't already have wealth. In fact, back in 2018, Representative Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez said something similar in an interview with the New York Times, telling them the transition period will be very unusual because I can't really take a salary. I have three months without a salary before I'm a member of Congress. So unless you come from wealth, your housing situation will be pretty precarious, at least temporarily, until you get your first check. Now, I feel like this is obvious to most people, but the reason why we're talking about this is because the Republican Party tried to use that clip that we just watched to attack Maxwell Frost and make it seem as if he's lying about his current situation. RNC Research tweeted out, Florida Democrat Congressman-elect Maxwell Frost, whose salary as a member of Congress will be $174,000 per year, says he's, quote, probably just going to have to like couch surf for a little bit. Now, as you're going to find out, this tweet did not go well for them. It was humiliating because not only is it just on its face, deeply unserious and disingenuous, but Maxwell's response was so good that he ratioed them into oblivion. So their tweet got just over 2,000 likes, but this response by Maxwell Frost got nearly 120,000 likes. And here's what he says here. LOL, so out of touch that they don't understand how renting an apartment works. Let me break this down. I don't get my first paycheck till February, and I don't have a lot of money. When you move into an apartment, you pay first, deposit sometimes last, and for furniture. He adds, so much for that RNC reason search. Yeah, and that's a great follow-up because all they had to do was Google the cost of living in Washington, D.C. to find out that if you're just a normal person, it's pretty expensive. This is courtesy of rent.com, but they report that the average cost of rent in D.C. as of 2023 is $1,962 a month for a studio, $2,443 for a one-bedroom, and $3,239 for a two-bedroom apartment. And again, as Maxwell Frost pointed out, this isn't taken into account the first and sometimes last month of rent, move-in costs. You're going to have to rent a U-Haul truck and get all of your belongings to DC or purchase new belongings and also credit. Some people just don't get approved for that or they have bad rental history. So this is something that demonstrates how out of touch the GOP is, but it also demonstrates a broader issue that they have and why they're not appealing to younger people. As Victor Xi pointed out, which was retweeted by Maxwell Frost, the tweet by RNC Research earlier attacking Maxwell Frost is so ignorant and proves exactly why the vast majority of Gen Z isn't voting for them. They have no desire to listen to us, they have no desire to understand our concerns, and they have no desire to make our lives better. And Victor's absolutely correct about that. This last election proved that the GOP is performing poorly with younger generations. But what are they doing to improve that? Are they trying to address our needs, tackle climate change, or even talk about it in a serious manner, address the housing crisis, student debt? No. Everything that they're doing, every action indicates that they want our lives and future to be worse. They are explicitly vindictive and antagonistic towards two generations. So what exactly do they expect? Are they surprised that Zoomers and millennials don't like them after they've done everything to spit in our faces? They shouldn't be. In fact, an article published in Financial Times discusses how millennials, unlike their predecessors, are not becoming more conservative as they get older. And this graphic demonstrates that this trend actually holds true in both the United States and the UK. And you can see that the vote shares of Tories and Republicans are declining with millennials. And with respect to Zoomers, the GOP's policies are so unpopular that it's causing them to change decisions that they make, major life decisions that they make. CNBC published an article that discusses a best colleges survey, which finds that 39% of prospective undergraduates are basing their decision on which state to attend college in on abortion access, and 43% of current undergrads are reevaluating whether or not they want to remain in a state that they're currently going to 
College Inn following the reversal of Roe v. Wade. And I know people personally who can't wait to finish college because they're in a red state without abortion access, a very conservative state, and they want to get out ASAP. And with regard to that article from CNBC, one student literally said that as soon as they finish college, they don't want to just get out of a red state. They want to leave the country because it's a scary time in America where women are once again treated as second class citizens, overtly so. So this is why young people don't like the GOP. This is why the vote share of Republicans is actually decreasing among millennials. It's because they don't even not care about us. Again, they are openly hostile towards us and what we want and what we need, and they don't even care to try to learn. They're just openly ignorant, and they wear that ignorance as a badge of honor and still expect young people to support them in elections. But it's hurting them, and they just they don't care. They figure, why try to win people over when you can just try to rig elections through gerrymandering or the legal system? Now, keep in mind that the 116th Congress was comprised mostly of millionaires, according to Open Secrets, and I'm sure that the 117th Congress will be no different. But that's why RNC research instinctively saw what Maxwell Frost said and thought, oh, we should attack him. Because if you're making $174,000 per year, you very clearly must have money. In fact, even though Maxwell Frost hasn't gotten his first paycheck yet, it's inconceivable that he wouldn't already have the money as a working class Zoomer to put down a down payment. It's inconceivable that he wouldn't have the credit needed to get approved or the good rental history needed to be approved for an apartment in D.C. for his new job because... I mean, that's their experience exclusively. Most members of Congress are extremely rich. They come from wealth and they've never had to think about these things. They probably don't even know that you need a lot of money up front to get an apartment. They probably don't even know that you need good credit to be approved for things like cars, like apartments, because that's the economy that we're living in. But if you're detached from that, then these things are aren't going to be obvious to you, right? Which is why they decided to attack him because they thought, oh my God, how dare you complain about not being able to get an apartment when you're making this money as a member of Congress, failing to consider that he wasn't already wealthy before getting elected. And it's ironic that they were trying to appeal to working class people with that attack on Maxwell Frost because they're trying to make it seem as if he's elitist for complaining about money when he's going to be making a lot of money as a member of Congress. But again, I think most people understand that when you get a new job, you're still going to struggle for a while until you get that first check. And oftentimes when you get that first check, there's a lot of bills that are due money that you borrowed that you have to pay back to people. So it's just, they're so out of touch. And with every single thing that they do, even if they try to appeal to working class people, they still come off as out of touch and elitist. And that's because they are out of touch and elitist. And this tweet demonstrated that as clear as day, but thankfully Maxwell Frost capitalized on that opportunity. And that tells me that he's going to be a good member of Congress because he's able of communicating what average Americans go through. So I have high hopes for him. So, um, yeah, this was uh, very entertaining to watch unfold.